Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Jacob, and in this video we are going to be making some confetti, a confetti animation like this, in JavaScript, and this is the HTML5 canvas that we're drawing it on. So, let's get started. Alright, so this is what we have in the HTML, pretty basic. We're just starting off with a canvas and a link to our JavaScript, and nothing in the JavaScript file. So we just have two files, index.html and confetti.js, and it's empty, it looks like this. So let's get started with first variables. We're going to say canvas document get element by ID uh, confetti is the ID of the canvas that I have over here. And then we'll say context equals canvas.get context and 2D. I'm also going to set the width and the height of the canvas to 640 by um, 480. Sounds nice. For now, we're going to have a couple other variable variables, uh, pieces of confetti is going to be an array, and um, I guess we'll leave it at that for now, and we'll have a couple functions, update, and draw, and these functions are going to call themselves, uh, once you first call them of course, so we'll just have to say update, and draw like that. Because then here in the update function, we're going to say set timeout, update, one millisecond. And for the draw function, we'll say request animation frame draw. Okay. So, well actually, this pieces array is going to hold pieces of confetti, and these are going to be of type piece of confetti, like this. And they're each gonna have properties like uh, X, Y, um, rotation, speed, all that stuff. We're gonna accept X and Y as parameters there. And then we'll say this dot X equals X, this dot Y equals Y, this dot uh, size equals, and we'll just generate a somewhat random size by saying math.random times 0 0.5 and then uh, plus 0 0.75 so that'll just give us a number between uh, well 0.75 and 1.25 then we'll just multiply that by say 15 so we'll get a size around 15 but it'll vary a little bit between pieces this dot gravity, which is going to be how fast it falls, is going to be similar to this actually. Except we don't want to be falling 15, that, that would be really fast. So I'm going to say like 0 0.01 for now. Not really sure about a great value right now. We can adjust it later. Um, we're also going to need a rotation. Rotation math dot pi times two times math dot random random. I don't need parentheses, but it makes it it makes it easier to see exactly what I'm doing there. And then this dot rotation speed math dot pi pi times two times math dot random times 0 0.01. Again, this value is probably going to be adjusted somewhere along the line. Actually, I might want to make it a little bit smaller there. Okay, so we're this array is going to have a whole bunch of pieces in it. So let's fill that array. Um, initially, let's see, how many elements do we want? Let num number of, of pieces equal, um, start out with 50, I guess. So while pieces length is less than number of pieces, then we'll add another piece. Pieces dot push new piece. 
and we're gonna give it a random x and y. So math dot random times canvas width and math dot random times canvas height height should do the trick. And that'll just add a well, that'll add about that'll add fifty uh, pieces to the pieces array. And now let's put a little bit in this draw function so we can actually see what we're doing. I'm going to say pieces for each. And then we'll just draw the piece. So save, save, like this. Since each piece has a rotation, um, I'm going to translate the canvas and rotate the canvas by doing ctx dot rotate. Well, actually, I'm going to do translate first to p dot x minus p dot size over 2 and p dot y minus p dot size over 2. I think that's right. And then context. Uh, re the rotate p dot rotation and then fill rectangle at negative p dot size over two negative p dot size over two p dot size p dot size actually I think this needs to be a plus sign not an equal sign, a plus sign, and this one too. So what I think this is going to do is translate the canvas a little bit past the x and y coordinate where we want to draw it. Um, we're going to translate to the center of the piece and then rotate around the center and then um, this the negative p dot size over 2 is going to reposition the rectangle um, well around the center of the rotation so this negative p dot size over 2 is like um, complementing this positive p dot size over 2 and of course we have to just change the color to see context dot fill style p dot color but p doesn't have a color yet um, yeah, each of the pieces has to be a different color. So I'm going to define another function up here called random color. And we'll say colors equal an array and return um, colors uh, math.floor math.random times colors.length. And then we can just fill up colors the colors away array with a bunch of different colors. So I'm going to say um, red, um, full green, so that's like a lime green, blue, uh, this color, that color, and that color. And then we'll return a random one of those six for setting this dot color equal to random color, like so. All right, now let's come over here and check out what we got. We have a bunch of pieces of confetti here, just flat out on the screen. So now we're going to, well, this is being called a bunch of times, but nothing is changing, so it's not really animating. But before we do that, I'm going to have to make sure that we clear, clear rectangle, 0, 0, canvas width, canvas height. Make sure we clear that. And then we'll be able to draw this over and over again after updating. So what we're going to do here is update for... Um, let i equal pieces dot length 
minus 1. We're going to be looping through this backwards. Uh, while i is greater than or equal to 0 and i minus minus. And then let p equal pieces i. First, we'll check and see if the piece it has fallen below the bottom edge of the canvas. So if p dot y is greater than canvas dot height pieces splice i1. I'll just remove that element and then we'll continue. Otherwise, we'll say p dot y plus equals gravity and p dot rotation plus equals p dot rotation speed. However, depending on how fast the computer is able to run this, depending on the computer, these lines may turn out, uh, end up doing different things. By the way, this has to be p dot gravity. Whoops. So um, we're going to um, multiply these by the change in time since the last update occurred. So we'll have this variable called last update time, and that'll be equal to date dot now. And here we'll say let now equal date dot now. And delta time equals now minus last update time. And then down here, last update time equals now. This will enable us to say p dot gravity times delta time, just in case we missed an uh, update or two uh, with the milliseconds here. And then we'll it'll be at a consistent rate. It might be a little choppier, but it'll it will not be a different speed. <sighs> All right, let's see if this is working. And it is. We have pieces of confetti rotating kind of fast, I guess, and falling really slow. So I'm going to adjust the gravity to be a little bit bigger. Maybe just 0.1. Is that too fast? And well, that looks OK. And the rotation to be a little bit faster. Or I mean, not faster, slower. That's too slow. So I'm going to say like... Um, That looks pretty good. And now, well, the pieces of confetti fall off of the canvas and they just disappear and we're not adding any new ones. So might as well over here say a similar thing to right here. Similar but not the same, which is why I'm going to copy paste it instead of writing a function like fill up the array or whatever. Because right here, pieces.push, the Y coordinate is going to have to be um, always just the top of the canvas. So I'll say like negative 20. And now we are generating new pieces of confetti every time one down here uh, falls off the bottom and gets deleted. And there we go, everybody. We have made some confetti in the HTML5. JavaScript canvas. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Hope you learned something from it. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. My name is Jacob, and have a good one.